story. Now I want to talk about Docker Hub. We wanted to provide the opportunity for you to get to some of these things really easily. So there's actually a safeguard bash Docker image. Let's say that I don't want to install anything. I just want to start with Docker and I want to use an image, build a Docker file based on that image and start hacking away at safeguard or better yet, I want to build something that listens to your API and calls a script and I want to package that all up inside Docker. Okay. So th that's actually what, um, one of the next demos is going to be. I'll probably show this safeguard bash demo. And then I want to talk about this safeguard.net um, ticket system integration, but I might not show that because I don't want, I don't want anyone to fall out of their chair or anything or get nervous, but I can show that at the end if you, if we have time. Um, but let me show you this, uh, this, this bash demo or this Docker demo. So this one just starts out by showing you that it's just cloned down the repo. So this demo is actually, the source code for this demo and all the demos is actually in the open source repos. So you can just pull it down and look at it. But this one just starts out with a Docker file, okay? Um, it uses the one identity safeguard bash Docker image, the base image, um, and, and it just uses the most up-to-date one that's already published out there on Docker Hub. So you can get this yourself. You don't have to have anything. You just sit down on a terminal and you, and you do Docker pull and pull that image down. All this is going to do, and it's explaining what it's going along, is it's going to pull down that image, put another script on top of that image to build a new image, and then it's going to run that as a container. And the, the script that it's putting on top is just, hey, every single time, um, I want you to start up an A to A session and actually start printing out a password. And every time that password changes, I want you to call this script. And that script that I added just prints out the current password, right? So it's just really a simple demo. Um, but this same script actually has the same resilience as the safeguard.net API, right? It'll, you can disconnect safeguard. I actually left this running for two weeks and it just kept going, right? And I kept rebooting, re, you know, reconfiguring my environment and it just kept going. And every time I changed that password, I saw that notification in a Tmux window buried in my terminal on another machine. Um, it just kept running and running. Um, but I want to show a couple things um, that can actually get you in trouble with this video to where your developers not considering themselves security professionals might do some weird stuff. So there's some environment actually required and you see me typing it in here at the top of the screen. There's some environment required for you to actually inject a certificate into this container so that it can pull a password. And you'll can, you can see like a numskull, I put the password right there on the, on the command line, right? For, for the private key. Um, the problem with that is even if I run that command and it totally exits, um, or it, if I run that command and, it, and I close that terminal, I can still go back later and look at the process space and I can see that environment variable sitting there, right? And so you have to make sure that your developers aren't getting so excited about using Docker that they do something stupid because that's actually the main danger with DevOps is that they'll get excited about using a techni new technology and they'll take a password or a secret out of a secure environment and put it somewhere where it's insecure. So I show a couple techniques in this, um, in this video about how to avoid this. First, I start out by taking that environment and centralizing it into a file to be passed into Docker, which is pretty good. But now I got the problem of that file exists on the file system. And so I show one other bash technique um, <coughs> where you can go and create a file, an ephemeral file in memory um, on the command line, put the data into that file and have it available for that command line. But when the process exits, that file is destroyed, right? So a lot of those techniques and things are, are going to be in there um, and you don't, have to, you don't have to worry about it. We're going to try to provide the guidance that your customer, that your uh, developers need in order to interact properly with Safeguard, right? That's, that's a thing that we feel like is our responsibility is to try to keep you secure as you're entering into these DevOps environments. So this is gonna show you that technique that I talked about using a here document. Those of you that, that are familiar with some more advanced uh, bash scripting, you can go ahead and put that into a file that's just, you know, cat onto the file system or onto the, uh, um, into the command line, and there it shows up as devfd63, right? And when I close that process, that file is no longer on the system. 